Hey guys, Matteo here. Welcome back to a new video. This is episode two of the Q&A series. Thank you again so much guys for commenting under my videos and uh, let's answer some of your comments. So first comments from Casually Crude. What's the best editing laptop to handle this camera video quality? Is referring to the Ursa Mini Pro 12K and also the Pocket 6K. So I don't know what is the best laptop, but I can tell you that for me, my MacBook Pro M1 Max is working perfectly fine. I'm able to edit 12K Ursa Mini Pro footage in an 8K timeline without any issue. Of course, Pocket 6K footage in a 6K timeline like butter. I have it connected to my Apple display, so it works like a desktop if I need to, to stay home, but I also can take it with me and travel around the world without any issue. I can edit on the go, 12K footage, no problems. Second question, and uh, this guys is a question, this is a comment that I see all the time under every single video that I posted. T1 Media asking, what timeline setting do you use? Gamma, color manage, Timeline setting, I set it up to 4K, 24P. That's it. I don't touch anything else. I leave everything as a default resolve setting. So don't touch anything there. Gamma, I don't touch anything there neither. All I do is I keep the default setting. I bring my footage in there, put my battery lights on it, convert to Rec. 709. I keep it simple. That's what I like. Save time, works like a charm. In terms of exporting settings in DaVinci, I don't do that much, so if I need an H.264, I export H.264, QuickTime H.264, 4K, and the bit rate is around 150 megabytes a second, something like that, maybe even 100 for Instagram, that kind of stuff. For deliverables to client and also YouTube upload, now that I have the fiber, it's definitely easier, but I do export in ProRes HQ 4K, that's about it. Sometimes I also export in 6K, nothing else. I do use custom quality and I don't touch anything at all. And it's been always working great for me. Another question from Dionisio Apandro. Hi Matteo, curiosity, is the MacBook Pro reliable to do color grading work? This is a massive debate. There's a massive topic, but in short, Yes, so, you know, my friend Rafi, we made the battery less together, he's a top D18 LA, he has three Flanders, Sony, and he tells me that every time he has to do like a deliver or checking out some colors, the, you know, he use the Flander for sure, but then the last color check he does is on the MacBook, because mainly everything is online right now. MacBooks are indeed very accurate in terms of display, and this is, guys, I'm talking just for online, now, if you're doing stuff for cinema, TV, all this kind of stuff, of course, you want to go through it an entirely different process. Here, I'm only talking about online. And yes, for online, MacBook Pro are perfect. Next comment from Randy Ruiz. Question, I have the Blackmagic 6K Pro and I black balance my camera. I still get a lot of noise in the shadows and in the black. Any recommendation? I used to have the Blackmagic 6K, never had that much noise like I do with the Pro. In this case, guys, I think you should contact the Blackmagic supports. They might gonna be able to help you out. This might be a faulty unit. It depends on the situation. But you know, sometimes I hear people shooting in the pitch black and expect no noise at 3200. So keep in mind, guys, if you don't have any light, if it's super underexposed, you always gonna have noise. Now, if you have noise in bright daylight at ISO 400 and it's very noticeable, at that point, yes, it is a problem with the camera, with the sensor, you might need a replacement. Next comment, Marco Graziani film. Were you already aware about the style of the video you will shoot back in the day, or you did a little bit of everything at the beginning of your career? Now, very simple answer. Yes, I did a little bit of everything. I started in clubs doing after movies video because at the time I, before becoming a filmmaker, I was a DJ. So all my network was around the club. So I was also in PR, so I knew pretty much everyone. When I started to make a video, I started calling people and asked them if they wanted an after movie. Then from there, I moved to little music video, corporate video, commercial, weddings, events. I was getting everything I could. Of course, you have to pay the bill. Gear is expensive and I wanted to make some money. So I took everything. I did a lot of experience. I also think it's interesting to get pretty much to do a little bit of everything at the beginning because you can check out what you feel more comfortable, what you like better, and then you decide where you wanna go. 
Next comment from Jacob Centeno. Uh, do you tend to include grip lighting as well in your day rate? I did it at first, but then my company grew and acquired more gear, but I kept my day rate at 1500. I learned pretty fast that I need a PA or two, so I might have to raise my rate, but business is a little bit slow. And the answer I think is pretty straight. Yes, I do think you should raise a little bit your price. It depends what you acquire. So if you're showing up on set with a 600D, a 300D stand and all this kind of stuff, I think you should charge a little bit more because of course you did spend some money and you should try to make the money back. If you keep your same rate, you're basically never paying off that gear. So even if it's $100, I will try to raise it a little bit. Now for the second part of the question regarding PA, you're absolutely right. Sometimes people forget that, yeah, maybe you get a light, a second light, sandbag system. At that point, if you wanna move fast on set, even if you don't wanna move fast, you're probably gonna need a couple of PA or a gaffer to you know, operate that equipment. Of course, if you're hiring a person, charge the client for it, you know. Last comments, Kamaru Covington. Thanks, Mateo. Are you feeling yourself financially free working as DP? I mean, in terms of having enough time with your family, taking enough days off without losing quality of life, struggling with living on the road. Was it comfortable for you being a freelancer? I never lived on the road. I mean, I moved quite a bit. And I was working full time. And when I went freelance, uh, yes, my goal was actually becoming one of those DP that you see, you know, in LA that they, they are in LA one day, New York, Florida, Japan. That was indeed my goal. But after meeting some people and hearing some story, you know, my, my goal completely changed. Now I try to do not necessarily small project, but I try to go to the client and actually shoot for the client myself, try to get a budget and then trying to hire a crew. And you know, if there is a cool project that they hire me as a DP, that's fine. But just the thought about living my life on a plane, catering every day, eating out, no workout. You always on the move, you're always working, you're always traveling. And the problem is that you're not gonna even use the money. You can't take day off because if you take days off, you kind of lose your, your circle, they get a call another DP, they're gonna cut you out. So you can't really, you know, you always have to work, 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 or otherwise you're gonna miss the train. And no, I don't wanna do that. I feel perfectly fine where I am. In terms of are you financially free as a DP? Again, yes, but you know, it's a bunch of stuff that gets together. So uh, there's stock footage, YouTube, uh, lots, courses, and of course, client shoot. Uh, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to shoot less and for better projects. So I'm trying to get projects that pay way more than what I used to do. Again, try to be less stressed out. So, you know, maybe I take one project a month. I also have some money to invest in spec ads and short films. Of course, I wanna do independent feature films. That's still my goal. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this second episode. Uh, again, if you have any question that you want me to answer, just feel free to comment even this video right here or all the other video that you're watching on my channel. And I'm gonna do my best to answer the most interesting comments. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.